get started here. Have a seat. All right. Good afternoon, everybody. Welcome to the NCAA Men's Basketball Championship West Regional here at Crypto.com Arena. A couple announcements before we get underway. As a courtesy to your fellow media members and team participants, please remember to silence your cell phones. For those of us in the room here, uh, if you have a question, please raise your hand. We have two mic holders, Wesley and Luke, and they'll make their way over to you. We ask that you provide your name and media affiliation, affiliation each time that you ask a question during the press conferences. For those of us joining on Zoom, please make sure to raise your hand. Use the raise hand function, and we'll, uh, we'll get over to you. Uh, we're going to address questions in the room first and then over Zoom. And a reminder here that uh, recording of press conferences on cell phones or cameras is prohibited. One final reminder before we get underway, our satellite coordinates for today are SES3, Transponder 14, Slot B9. Hope you all got that. Downlink 11,975.5 vertical, date rate 11.914, symbol 7.2. If you have any further questions, that was a lot of numbers, I know. If you have any further questions about satellite coordinates, please see the representatives in the back of the room from Hammond Communications. All right, with that, we will get our press conference started here with Clemson head coach Brad Brunell. Brad, we ask that you just provide an opening statement here, and then we'll get started with questions. Yeah, obviously really happy to be here. Um, proud of my team and the way that uh, we played last week was uh, – Thought we had some terrific performances, and uh, certainly we'll need one of those this uh, this next game against Arizona. I've uh, watched them a good bit throughout the year. Uh, Tommy's done an unbelievable job at Arizona here these last couple years. This team, like most, uh, super dynamic offensively, really good inside-out offense, a little bit like we play. Um, we're very familiar with Caleb Love and, and – Obviously, how good a player he is from his time at Carolina. Um, you know, it'll be a raucous uh, crowd with a lot of Arizona fans, but uh, we're, we're super excited to be here. Our guys uh, have worked really hard, and, and uh, we're looking for the opportunity. Uh, John Blau with the Post and Courier. Uh, sorry for the offbeat question, but Boz Lida. Um, what has it been like to kind of see him transform from a guy you're obviously hoping to have some pretty good minutes yeah. as a reserve to, to kind of a team hype man? Yeah. Uh, he's just a terrific kid. Uh, we knew that. You know, we had a Ben Middlebrooks leave and at a uh, in the transfer portal. And, and obviously when you have a guy like P.J. back, there's there's not going to be a lot of minutes. So it's, it's hard to recruit somebody to come in. You know, we told him it's going to be a, you know, five to seven minute job and and uh, he just wanted the opportunity to play at the high major level um, wants to be a coach I think that really spoke to me he's an unbelievable energy giver uh, in terms of a of a person and uh, you know it's unfortunate that he's had some shoulder issues this year and won't be able to finish the season but what he's meant just in terms of energy and and positivity um, you know tremendous and uh, to have a guy who cares about the team and just about the experience uh, really helps keep you keep us you know in a good place and there were times this year when it wasn't that wasn't easy we'll go in the back Joe Reedy Associated Press Brad how much did the kind of the <clears throat> propel you to this year to support that you got from the administration last year after narrowly missing the tournament, but also Joe and PJ came out pretty emphatically yeah. and supported you after the Baylor game. How much did that mean to? Yeah, it always means a lot when your players have your back. Um, you know, it, it's it, it's just special, right? I have tremendous relationships with my guys, and, and certainly PJ is somebody I've been – I mean, I started recruiting him when he was probably 15, 16 years old. So we've been together forever, competed against Joe. And, and uh, I think it speaks to Joe's Clemson experience, how much he's really enjoyed being a part of our program. Um, you know, in terms of administrative support, I've been lucky. I've had great support for 14 years. And uh, I think we've had a consistent program. Um, you know, we would like to have made the NCAA tournament a couple more times. We Last year was excruciatingly painful as we were 
one of the last teams left out. It happened to us in 2019 as well. Um, but we have had, you know, we've had some good teams. We've, we've, you know, I've said this before, we're fifth in the ACC in wins over the last five to seven years. I don't think people would, you know, be a great bar question, right? I think, I think, you know, we have, would not be somebody that people would think that. But we've been very consistent. I think we have a lot of respect from the coaches in our league. Um, but, you know, again, it, it's what do you do in March? This is the, the, the biggest time of year. And so in 18, we went to the Sweet 16 to be able to come back here, you know, in 24. I, I think, again, there's not as many programs as you would think that have been to a couple in the last seven years. And uh, so we're, we're moving the needle. We're trying to continue to push it forward. Uh, but I've been very fortunate in my 14 years at Clemson that I've had uh, Graham Neff, who is my third athletic director, and uh, we have a great relationship and have had for a long time. He's he's was the number two man for a long time under Dan Radakovich, and he was in you know my sports supervisor, so we've been close. And and uh, you know I, I just I'm extremely grateful for that and uh, having had the opportunity as long as I have to be the coach at a, a place that I really enjoy. We'll go right here in the front. Uh, KTLA. Um, considering that you made the Sweet 16 in 2018, but a lot of players on this <laughs> roster maybe don't have experience playing this deep in the yeah. tournament, what's been the message this week? Yeah, don't just be happy to be here. Um, you know, we, we talked, you know, at one point during the season, I think it was in January when we were struggling, I had a, a really hard meeting with our players, and, and uh, you know, I told them I was – you know, we were teetering a little bit. We had an unbelievable November and December. We were, I don't know if it's just so excited to play. And we played a really hard schedule. And we won a bunch of games. And we were, we had like no adversity. And we were 10 and 1 and playing great. And then came back from Christmas and got smacked in the mouth by some teams in our league. Um, and had a hard time stringing some games together. We lost a bunch of close games, one one point games. And uh, at one point, I told our team, I think we were four and six in the ACC, and I said, guys, you know, we need to understand something. Um, I think some of you guys think we're the 10 and one team. We're, right now, we're the four and six team. And if we go four and six again, we won't be playing in the NCAA tournament. And I said, that'd be a shame because of what you did the first two months of the year, but also because I think we're good enough to go to the Final Four. And uh, that's not something that I throw around uh, easily, and I asked my older players, "Have you ever heard me say that to you?" And they said, "No." Uh, you know, I know my 2018 team. I said the same thing to them. I thought we were good enough to do it, um, but obviously, we're going to have to finish the season the right way. And uh, we played better, um, still a little inconsistent at times, but I do think there's a belief that our guys have that that we're pretty good. And when we're when we're clicking, we can play with anybody in the country. We've proven that. You know, we've beating some of the teams in this tournament and uh you know so I, I think that's a big part of it but there's these seasons are so long they're almost too long to be honest with you we start practicing in September um and now we're at the end of March you're going to have ups and downs you're going to have some 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 times that don't go well and you got to respond we'll keep it in the front here Darren Carter, uh, Greenville News. Uh, yep. Coach, uh, Josh Beadle, um, his, he didn't play against Baylor, and I think he logged three minutes against New Mexico. Um, what has caused his uh, minutes uh, to go down? Uh, to, uh, to it's nothing to restrain. that he's done. It's just been coach's decision based on how other guys have played. We've, we've gone with our starters more, uh, more experienced players in, in these you know big-time games. Shelby Swanson with the Daily Tar Heel. Um, Coach, obviously, you know, you don't want the road to end here, but what can you say just about having four teams here representing the ACC in the Sweet 16? Yeah, I've been pretty outspoken that, I, you know, I've been in our league 14 years, and so um, I knew the quality of play that we had this year. I, I thought we were extremely deep. I, I told everybody before the ACC tournament that I wouldn't be shocked if, a, you know, a higher seed team won or, you know, lower seat, however you want to look at it. Um, and NC State won our, won our tournament. Uh, I just think that there's great parity in our league. Um, and it seems, for whatever reason, I think because we have a lot of different styles of play in our league, that when we get to the NCAA tournament, we've kind of seen everything. And our teams adjust and seem to play very well this time of year. So uh, certainly there's a tremendous amount of pride 
uh, with our coaches and players to that the ACC is performing as well as it is. Uh, but again, I don't think that any of us are surprised by that. We'll go to the third row. Uh, yeah, hi, Bruce Pascoe from the Arizona Daily Star. Coach, I think Arizona got back home about 6 p.m. on Saturday. You guys played Sunday night. I was wondering, did you go home to Clemson? And what yeah. was that short turnaround like? Yeah, we had a less than ideal probably. Um, we got home at 3.30 in the morning on Sunday. Um, and then, you know, kind of realized we play on Thursday. So we better get back out to California. And uh, so we chartered a plane and, and uh, we had to drive an hour to Greenville. So we left campus at 4 o'clock. So we were really only home about 12 hours. Um, and, you know, Yesterday was a little challenging. We practiced, but it wasn't easy. Um, just trying to get our legs back, just get used to the time change and, and all of that. I'm, you know, I'm optimistic we'll be ready to go uh, tomorrow. But it, it, it's been a quick turnaround, that's, that's for sure. A lot of sleepless nights for the staff trying to get ready. We'll keep it in the third row. Go ahead. Thanks, Beth Harris, AP. Um, Brad, I'm wondering, uh, the NCAA president said today that he's they're going to start working on um, some kind of uh, plan to ban prop bets on individual players. And I'm wondering, do you have an opinion on that? And also whether you've seen any of your players get harassed or bothered either at home or on the road about uh, stats and things like that this season? I haven't seen it personally. Um, it wouldn't shock me. Um, people are extremely aggressive uh, these days. You know, we get phone calls in our office sometimes when things obviously don't go better's way and we get some nasty calls. So I know our players probably get that um, through social media. Obviously, I'm for that. And, uh, you know, it's a really unique time with everything going on in college athletics. And now the gambling piece is a whole nother, um, you know, log on the fire. Um, so it, it's really, this is so special. This whole experience as a young person is so special that I know it's professionalizing in a lot of ways, and um, I'm a little more old school, and that it worries me tremendously. And uh, you know, that's another another thing to be worried about. Quickly, for those joining us on Zoom, if you do have a question, please use the raise hand function. Keep it in the room here. Go ahead, right in the front. Uh, Darian Carter, Greenville News. Uh, Joseph Girardi's having a career year from the three-point line and the free throw line. Yeah. It, with him being a, being a graduate student, do you guys did you guys help him with, with his average? Or is that just Joe being Joe? Just yeah, to, I think it's a combination. Um, I think his experience certainly helps. I think his poise, his swagger, the fact he's been in all these moments, he's been in every kind of situation you can be in as a player. Um, he's got that inner belief that you can't coach. Um, but then I also think we've done a good job as a, as a staff and players of putting him in positions to be successful. And, uh, you know, he certainly has capitalized on that. We've got time for two more here. Let's go over there and then. Manning on Joe, how much has he meant to the program for you just coming from Syracuse and somebody who you watched for four years? Yeah, I mean, he's meant a lot. Um, we knew we had a good team coming back, Chase. Ian, PJ especially, you have three really good players. We lost Hunter Tyson, who's playing for the Denver Nuggets, and, and uh, Brevin Galloway, two starters. And uh, we wanted a, a, a wing with size, and so we went out and got Jack Clark, um, somebody who could defend and rebound. And then we wanted some scoring, because Hunter was a you know first-team all-league scoring type guy. And uh, you know what I'm really proud of is I think the guys within our program opened the transfer. Uh, brought the, the transfers in with open arms. And I think that that's maybe a bigger deal than people realize is, you, you know, it's great to want to bring in a bunch of transfers, but the guys in your program got to be up for that too, or, or you're going to have bad chemistry issues. We haven't had that. Um, PJ and Chase, I think, recruited Joe about as hard as we could um, to get him here, partly because we knew what kind of player he was and that he was going to be a good fit. And I think Joe, having competed against our team for four years in the same league, had a good feel for how we play, had seen guys in our program be successful, liked our style, and felt like this would be a good place for him. Final question over here. Yeah, yeah Coach. 
Uh, asking about the front court, what, what do you face in, in Arizona with Balo and Crevis and Johnson? What are yeah. your expectations? Yeah, they're tremendous. Um, I mean, they've got a lot of really good players. Certainly what you're impressed with is the way they, they have balance. They play with pace. Um, they certainly have an inside presence. Uh, I mean, they go right to Balo on the high-low right away initially on almost every possession. Um, Johnson is super athletic, competitive, tough. You know, beat you off the bounce, can make a three, he can guard five men. He does, you know, he does everything, switches on to guards. Um, they, they just, as you would expect, a team who's as, had as much success as they have, top ten team throughout the year, they've got a lot of really good players. They've got experience, um, both on the perimeter and in the post. Well, thank you, Coach. Okay. Thanks, everybody. All right, joining us here on the stage is Chase Hunter, Joseph Gerard III, and PJ Hall. We'll go ahead and open it up for questions. Again, remember to state your media affiliation before asking the question. Go ahead, we'll start right here. Uh, Darian Carter, Greenville News. Uh, this is a question for you, Joe. Um, you having a career high in three-point shooting and free throw percentage. Um, how have you re refined your shot entering this fifth season to boast those averages? Uh, I mean, just, you know, being consistent in the gym, trying to, you know, work out as much as I can. Um, but I think, too, you know, I obviously had some great teammates at Syracuse, great teams um, and a great system. And, you know, some of the guys, those guys are even in the NBA. But just a new system, you know. It's a, a different kind of offense where, you know, there's a lot of uh, other great players around me who can do different things that kind of make my job a lot easier. Um, and, you know, it's just, like I said, that a lot of the credit goes to the system that Coach Barnell has here um, and obviously the players around me who, you know, take – take a lot of pressure off me to um, kind of just focus on maybe sometimes a, an easier catch and shoot than, you know, I've had before. Go to the back row. Joe Reedy, Associated Press. Joe, PJ, you came out emphatically and supported your coach after Sunday's win over Baylor. Just what caused you guys to do that? Was it just stuff that popped up over the year and just getting into Sweet 16? Yeah. Um, I mean, you know, you see, we're all online nowadays. It's social media. Um, you see a lot of the things that people might say about players, coaches, teams, whatever it may be. And, um, you know, us as players obviously didn't end the season the way we wanted to um, against a few teams and lost some, you know, pretty bad games and pretty badly. Um, and a lot of times Coach Brownell is the one getting heckled for it. So um, we just wanted to show that we had support for him. We obviously, he's been here for 14 years, one of the better ones in the ACC. And uh, we just kind of wanted to show support. Um, because getting to the Sweet 16 is not easy, and to have him you know, leading us here is, is a pretty good job. Yeah, uh, a lot of the same. It's the second Sweet 16 in seven years, and, um, and it's it, over the past six or seven years, it's also one of the one of your, one of your coaching in the ACC is I think it's like top six winning coach in the league. So, I mean, there's a lot of credit that he is due and doesn't get. And so, uh, you know, playing for him for four years and being a South Carolina kid, it. It, uh, whenever someone goes after somebody who you've been playing for, you know it's not it's not fun or easy. And so, uh, you know, being able to win for him, we continued on this run is uh, special. What made you, what made you ultimately choose Clemson and just being welcomed immediately and just mm -hmm. how things have gone this year? Uh, I think just being you know comfortable with them, familiar with them for four years, played against them a bunch of times, um, and you know kind of knew the. Knew the system, knew the familiarity, knew how you know much these guys like playing for each other, and had a little bit of a connection to Coach Donlin back when he was at Michigan um, with Coach Beeline back to my high school days. So I was familiar with him. Um, and then when they, Coach Donlin and Coach Barnell came to my house for an in-home visit, um, you know I always tell the story. They were bragging about the locker room and how great these guys were to each other, and you know how much they really enjoyed playing together. And that was something I wanted to be a part of for my last year. And I obviously knew how great they had, a, how great of a team they had last year, and a lot of those guys were coming back. So. I had one shot at it to kind of get to a moment like this, to get back to a Sweet 16 like I did my sophomore year, and I felt like these guys gave me the best chance, and they've been nothing short of you know the best teammates I've ever had. We'll go to the fourth row. Brian Hamilton from the Brian Hamilton from the Athletic. PJ Chase, why has Joe been a fit? Why, why is the fifth-year guy coming in from Syracuse? Why has he fit so well in the room? 
You sorry, yeah. yeah, I think it's just because he's he's a great player and a great guy. And, you know, um, you know, he came on a visit and you know we immediately clicked. You know, I told him that, you know, I want I want the best for both of us when he came. You know, you know, I was glad when he committed. But I think the I think the biggest thing, like he said, we're all great players and we all want to see each other win. And so, um, you know, when that when that's on the court, you can you can see it. Yeah, I mean, obviously, there's a lot of stuff that speaks to his game with his shooting and uh, playmaking ability, but. You know, that's not going to work out if you're not a good dude. And so, you know, coming on this visit first time and standing here for a couple of days and just meshing with the guys right away, uh, we all knew that he was perfect fit for our, for our culture and our program. And, you know, it's been nothing short of that. And so we, uh, we get out and play golf a good bit whenever we're not in season and we, we have a good time. And it's, uh, you know, whenever you're able to connect with somebody that fast and that easy, uh, you know, it's a good fit for the team. Yeah. Over here in third row. Uh, Jordan Mendoza, USA Today Sports. Um, Coach had mentioned that you guys had familiar uh, familiarity with uh, playing Caleb Love before, um, and you guys have all had experience playing against him too. And him having one of his best seasons, are you? How are you guys approaching like the familiarity familiarity aspect of facing him, and then just also like how he's been able to elevate his game um, this season? Uh, yeah, uh, star player for sure. He's uh, definitely coming to his own this year. He's, he's having a great year, one of his best. Um, statistics year as well. I mean, it's, it's incredible to watch and uh, kind of keep track of from afar after playing against him for a couple of years. But, um, you know, other than that, I mean, there's, there's a lot of good players on that team. And uh, one thing that we've done these past two games is try to make guys uncomfortable, try to make guys get out of a rhythm. And I think that's kind of the same thing for this game. Uh, I think it kind of speaks in general for all games. And you're going to a good, great player like that. You just got to kind of try to limit his chances, yeah. Over here in the fourth row. For, for PJ, um, Arizona likes to go to follow a lot, and they like to move the pace, uh, fast pace, very well. Um, for you, you got into foul trouble in the last game. What are some keys for you to be successful in this game? Uh, probably just not put myself in positions to get those early fouls and dumb fouls. You know, I do my work early and uh, make sure I'm putting myself in positions to succeed. You know, fighting early and stuff like that. And um, you know, just also as corny as it sounds, sticking to your fundamentals. You know, not using your hands, using your elbows and forearms and stuff, and making sure you're not grabbing. All the stupid stuff and get you those dumb fouls. Try to stay away from that. We'll keep it in the fourth row. Addison Kombach here with Arizona PBS. This is for Chase and Joe. Kind of bouncing off that. Arizona plays at such a high level pace. They like move the ball up and down quickly. How do you guys kind of plan to neutralize like Colin Boswell, Caleb Love, and those guys? Yeah, just just making things hard for them. You know, making sure they're not getting any easy looks. You know, making sure that we're closing out hard on them. Um, you know, not letting them get in the lane. And then, um, you know, the thing is they got to guard us too. So, you know, making things hard for them offensively as well. And then, um, yeah, like I said, just making things hard for them and let them get some easy open looks early. Yeah, I think uh, what Chase said is, you know, hit it right on the head is not letting these guys get easy ones early because that's when, you know, a basketball player gets a lot of confidence. Um, and those guys are, like you said, great players. So um, when you let a great player get confidence early, it's usually a struggle bus for the, you know, the defense. So um, we're just going to have to be locked in early and make sure that there's, uh, there's nothing easy. Over here in the first row. Uh, Anthony Vasquez, KTLA. Question for PJ and Joe. Um, how do you think the team has responded after a sloppy end to the uh, regular season and the ACC tournament to now playing in the Sweet 16? Uh, yeah, great. And, you know, it's funny, like, like you hear that a lot. Obviously, the last game we played, yeah, it was more than sloppy. It was terrible. But, I mean, watch that, watch that outlier leading into that, even though we had a couple of losses at the end of the season, we were playing some of our best ball. Uh, and people tend to overlook that. We had won a good amount of games leading into the Notre Dame game, then had a couple guys out, and then also uh, ended up having a tough loss at Wake. Even though going back and watching the film, our defense was pretty solid overall. They hit a lot of tough shots. So coming into the tournament, I think Coach said it the other day, I mean, we had a pretty quiet confidence about ourselves. We had a lot of people talking about us saying that, I mean, we were picked, I'm pretty sure, under. We, we, weren't the, we were the underdog for the first game, and I mean, it was kind of like a kind of slap in the face. And so... You know, going into that, having a quiet confidence and shipping your shoulder, knowing that we can come in here and make some noise has, you know, been our attitude. And uh, keeping that confidence is huge. Uh, I think, yeah, I said it last week, we just kind of want to get our competitive edge back. Um, and, you know, that week of practice from, again, you got to kind of try and take a positive from every every negative. So, you know, we lost that game at BC, but it gave us like nine days, you know, until, until we had to play again. And, you know, we had a lot of practices, um, a lot of time in the gym together, a lot of meetings, a lot of film. And... It kind of just gave us an opportunity to get that competitive spirit back that we had earlier in the season when we were winning a bunch of games. And, you know, it gave us a lot of confidence going into the, you know, early games here in the tournament. So, um, and like Coach says, you kind of got to just try and bottle that momentum up as best as you can um, and keep it moving forward. 
follow up for Joe. What's it like being back in the Sweet 16? You made mm-hmm. it with Syracuse. What's it like being back here at Clemson? It's unbelievable, man. And uh, you know that was one of the things in in the transfer portal that you know I was you know really lo- lo- looking forward to is finding a team that you know I could get back here because there is no feeling like playing in March. Um, and you know this, these guys are unbelievable the way they brought me in, um, and they have obviously have an unbelievable culture, unbelievable system, unbelievable players and coaches. So. Um, it's unreal, man, and uh, it's a dream come true, honestly. And I'm just, you know, so thankful to be back here, but uh, hoping to make it even farther this time. Do we have any other questions? Go ahead, right here. Jordan Mendoza, USA Today Sports. Um, Coach had mentioned, you know, like the power of the ACC getting four teams in to the Sweet 16. You know, you guys faced them all season, and you know, when the conference was kind of not getting the love that it usually gets this season, like, does it surprise you guys to see? Um, four ACC schools make the Sweet 16 at all? Um, <clears throat> no, not in the least bit. I mean, it's funny, like, that's happened like, every year. I don't know about four in the Sweet 16, but like a couple years ago, we had three in the Elite Eight, two in the Final Four. Like, it's every year we get not enough respect and disrespected all year, you know, conference is down, and then we come here and start waxing people. And so, I mean, the, uh, the ACC is, I mean, as good as it's ever been. We, I, mean, I mean, I don't know that, but a lot of great coaches, a lot of great players. NBA type players, and uh, you know that's why, like in the non-conference, you come back into in conference, and everyone's like, "Oh, it's imploding on itself." No, it's because we have a lot of good teams from 16 to one, or however many teams are in there. So there's a uh, there's definitely not a dip in talent. Do we have any other questions for the student athletes? I don't see any here on Zoom. Last call. All right. Chase, PJ, Joseph, thank you for taking Appreciate it.